Okay, so hey Ross and uh, the Bingham gang, good to see you guys. Um, so we're going to get started right off. Um, first thing I want you to think about, you know, most of you guys are, were either invited or here or you're, or you're into, you know, you're coming in for a seminar. And uh, I always like to think, you know, if we're talking about a business, it has to do with the money. And I think, well, what was the first thing I did? You know, for the first thing, what was your first job? Think about your first job and why you took it. My first job was an usher at a, um, at a at an old old movie movie place interesting how, how it worked out uh, every, here here was my track here's what I did uh, I would um, when the movie started it was about to get started I'd make my way up to the front I'd make my way up to the front and then uh, the lights would go down my my you know my eyes were having a hard time I'd pull out my flashlight and I was making my way back I heard something but anyway I got to the back and I, I touched something and I looked back and I said there was this man, and this man was just kind of looking at me. And I said, sir, are you okay? And he just, he just, he just flopped on the floor. I said, are you okay? Are you going to, you know, uh, where'd you, uh, you know, are you okay? And he just kind of stood there, and he, I said, I said, sir, you need to move. And he, he didn't do anything. I said, if you don't move, I'm going to have to call the cops or something. And he started to stir, and I said, where'd you come from? He says, the balcony. And, um... It was this old theater. When the lights went off, his he went blind and he went over the edge too. And so, um, I tell that story because we're meeting for the first time. You're meeting me. I'm meeting you. Maybe you're meeting some folks in there. You don't know what kind of day they had. Maybe they had a balcony day. And so let's you know we'll cut each other a little bit of slack and and um, you know we'll get into this. So this may be your first brush with Amway. Okay, my first brush with Amway was when I was 21. Uh, at the time, I was engaged to Valerie. I was trying to deliver on all the promises that I had made to her. And uh, I was a 21-year-old kid trying to figure out what to do. And I, uh, my, uh, the guy I was working for had just gotten into the business. And he gave me a stack of tapes every day. And I would listen to these tapes. It was about a truck driver, a veterinarian, some other, some other guy. But they were talking about the obstacles, how they felt about it. And then they talked about success. And I thought, wow. And after a whole summer of that, I said, dang, I could do this thing. Maybe I could do this thing. He gave me a book called The Possible Dream. And I, you know, I read it. And so I had a quite a bit of time to just assimilate what was going on. And, um, and it gave me hope. You know, it gave me hope. And that's where I think we, you know, we, we're going to get started here. Hope is a great place to get started. Okay. Now we go. What I want to do with you here is I'd like to uh, ask you a few questions, give you a chance to answer them, uh, maybe stop, ha talk as a group, that type of thing, okay? So the first thing is motivation. Everybody makes changes based on motivation. I got my first job because, you know, I, I needed gas for my car. So, but post-marriage and stuff like, or, you know, just as people get into life, you know, into their 20s and 30s and stuff like that, um, they get to start noticing things. And, and I'm going to talk about kind of like three areas, you know, living below the line, uh, at, you know, maybe somewhere in the middle and uh, living above the line. So below the line for us, when we got serious about this business, 900 square foot house, we'd been married for 10 years. Not quite the dream. Uh, Honda Accord, 257,000 miles of cutlass wouldn't go backwards. Uh, I was traveling four days a week. We had uh, three kids. Valerie's out. You know, we had one coming. And it was kind of below the line, you know. And uh, maybe you're, maybe maybe that's a situation for you, you know. Maybe you're living with your parents. Want to get out of there, you know. Um, you get a car. It's parked. So you're riding the bus. Something's wrong with the car, you know. And, and you don't have the cash to fix it. Uh, you're working, maybe, maybe it, you're working minimum wage. And you just can't see how to get out of it. Uh, maybe there's no um, savings account. I mean, just kind of living from from one place to the next, and it's just you know it feels a little bit airy out there. And says, "Wow, you know how how is this lifestyle kind of impacting you? And uh, how does it you know how how you feeling? Is, is is some of this stuff resonating with you? You know, what well, another hundred? If you had another five hundred bucks a month uh, coming in on top of what you got coming in now, how would it change? You know." And so that's kind of where I, we, we were. We were living a little below the line. And for me, getting my time back, getting from the travel back was very important to me. I came home one summer night and my son was out there 
Uh, my five-year-old son was out there riding his little bike, his little two-wheeler. Hadn't seen him do that, you know, if ever. And I said, Braden, how'd you do that? I said, where, where'd you learn that? And he says, Bar uh, Art taught me. Now, Art was my next-door neighbor. So that was enough below the line to say, hey, I'm going to do something. I got to do something. And that's when I made the phone call. You know, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe now's the time for you, maybe not. Maybe, you know, that you're not getting bugged, okay? Let's talk about the middle. Maybe you're in the middle, you know? Things are fine. They really are. Things are fine, uh, but not, you know, they're fine for now, but not, you know, for the future. Uh, and I don't know if you know what I mean, but if you don't know what I mean, you're probably not there. Um, but it's a real low-level pain. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when you, you, you put your clothes on and uh, they just feel a little too tight and you wish things were just a little slightly different. Maybe your bank account's a little light, you know. Um, Maybe on, 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 on Sundays, you notice that uh, as, the, the, as the afternoon wanes, uh, you're watching the clock. And you wish it would slow down, you know, because Monday's about, around, about ready to greet you. Um, and you're not too excited about it, you know. Um, vacations, they may be few. Uh, maybe not much to do when you take them. And so there's not a whole, whole lot of, you know, excitement going on there. Um, your ears perk up anytime somebody mentions, you know, the company's hiring. You know, what is that telling you when your ears perk up every time somebody's mentioning that a company's hiring? Um, you don't like watching commercials because they just, they just seem so far out of reach. I mean, I have been there watching commercials and say, I don't, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to buy, be able to buy a new car, you know? Um, maybe your kids are living with you, you know? They're still here, and they're draining all, every time you get an extra, you know, buck or two, put it away, they drain it, you know, their car breaks down, they can't fix it, and you want, don't want them around, you want to keep them working, so you, you know, you donate. Um, you want to retire someday, maybe you're, you know, maybe your place you're, where you're working, there's no benefits. Uh, I know a lot of folks that, that, that you know, they're, they just don't have, no, they don't have the benefits. Um, the Affordable Care Act, it's doubled your health, you know, your health care insurance rates. Uh, and you're thinking about uh, dropping it, you know, going, going, going in the risk. And so, hmm, you know, um, but you still got time um, as long as your job holds out. You know, you're, you're right in that middle ground where uh, it's, I don't need to make a change. Uh, you know, I don't, I, need to, I don't need to be looking, but all these things keep happening. You know, you're not buying, you know, the commercials, the, the, all the stuff that we just talked about. And so... Uh, you don't really need to make any changes, but things are fine. Um, or maybe you've you've tried some stuff. You know, maybe you've, you've you uh, maybe you've tried a few things, and um, maybe it's working for you. Maybe you've got an extra job, or you've got something going on right now. And this came this came waltzing into your life, but you don't really think you need it right now. And that second job, maybe uh, maybe you're you're uh, what do you call it? You're doing the umpire on the weekend, or you're, uh, you know, you got, you got a, a paper route or something like that. Maybe that's good enough, you know. Maybe it's not. So maybe we can talk about that. Now let's talk about above the line, okay. Uh, these folks, they get up on Monday morning. They're excited. They're, they're excited. You know, um, they're living their dream, you know. But they're still, they're still, I mean, they're living their dream. You know, they're, they're coaching the kids. They're, you know, they may be coaching the football or whatever. Uh, they're working a new case. Uh, they're perfecting an operation. They developed a new app. Um, they're teaching a new technique. They, they just hit their millionth view on, 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 their, on the new uh, uh, blog site they put in. Things are great. Things are awesome, you know. Um, and because maybe you're so optimistic, you're in the mode of, of uh, you, you, you're open to maybe taking a look at diversifying your stuff, Okay. You see this thing. It's you know it's another stream of income. It turns uh, expenses into another stream of income. It's it's a turnkey program. Um, it's upside revenue, and there's no downside with with overhead. You can see that an extra three thousand dollars a month that could pay all those uh, Visa credit card, Visa and Mastercard and American Express down to zero. You know, um, you can actually afford to hire a, fi a financial advisor and listen to him with perky ears because he can talk to you about some stuff that you can actually now afford because you got an extra three or four thousand dollars coming in a month outside your dream job okay you remember you're living your dream and i and i don't want to pull you out if, if you're a coach and you're a great coach i want you in there 
you know. Uh, if you're a doctor and you're a great doctor, once you're in there, stay in there, stay in there, stay, you know, if you're, whatever you're doing, if you're a teacher, stay in there, stay in there. But maybe an idea of, of a, an extra $3,000 a month or whatever comes in and you can take your 30-year mortgage and turn it into a 15-year mortgage, okay? You start learning how to pay cash for your cars and just ease things up. So you see, you see Amway is a nice business. It's, it, you know, it's something you can do. It's actually something you can do with your, uh, you know, with your, with your uh, schedule right now, with what you've got going. And we would like to invite you and, you know, to, to uh, what do you call it, um, entertain those thoughts, okay? Stratosphere. Now, there's other folks that look at this business and they uh, see the stratosphere opportunity um, that Amway provides at the higher levels, you know, like a diamond. You know, they, they see the lifestyle, they see the cash, they see the, 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 the trips. Uh, these guys are these guys are full time. They've been full time for five years, 10, 20, 25 years. Some are young, some are old, but they love the idea of, you know, um, of that type of opportunity, okay? So we've talked about, you know, the, the, the beginning, the middle, the, the, uh, the above, uh, living above the line, you know, li I, like I should have said, living below the line, living at the middle, living above the line, the stratosphere. I'd like you to take a 10 minute break right now, turn it off and talk about where, you know, take some notes. You know, you, if you want to talk to your neighbor, you guys want to talk about it as a group, but where are you right now? And what are some of those issues and what have you tried to fix it? You know, have you tried two or three things to fix it? You know, how, how's, it, how's it working? You know, have you given up yet? Are you, are you, are you ready to, to, to go another way? Um, and so that's what I'd like you to do. Take, take a few minutes and just um, let's talk about your dreams and then come back, you know, talk, talk about where you're at and maybe some things that, that you would like to see fixed and, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about maybe a solution that we have to offer, okay? You know, on some level, you'd like to you'd like to participate, okay? So, but the next thing that comes up in your mind is, well, how do you get started? I mean, what's what's this thing going to cost? Well, sixty five bucks is about sixty five bucks. Put you put you, uh, it, it gets you into an Amway business, okay? You can sign the line and and you're all set up. Uh, you can go on the website. You can set up your own website. Uh, you can have access to a, you know, a multi-billion dollar support system for you in the state you're in, the community you're in, the state you're in, uh, in the United States and 110 co countries around the globe, okay? That's quite a bit of money uh, uh, or quite a bit of support for 65 bucks. But now, um, what else can you spend your money? What else can you invest in? Well, you can start using the products. You know, if you're going to represent the stuff, you might want to find out what, what they're all about. Uh, you might want to give away a few. And have people other try when you when you start to market your business nothing like letting the product uh, out there and and letting people try it and see, you know see if they like it they can talk about the you know the, the money back guarantees and all the things that, that are we have a great money back uh, guarantee it's what six months a hundred percent the reason why is because they're pretty good products you know we don't have we're not worried about it because they don't come back so off very often uh, you can invest in an iPhone an iPad you know to tell the story maybe some audio visio some websites um, some CDs, some social media. This is a business. We're in a whole world. People ask me, how do you build a business? Well, when I got started, it was in 1990. Uh, today it's 2015. I don't know exactly how to build a business today, given today's tools. Okay. And we're kind of pioneer, you know, we're pioneering that way. This is a pioneer. You know, we need, we didn't never do seminars, uh, video, video wise, but, uh, you know what? Um, this works out great. This works out great because I'm here. I'm not too far from my house. Uh, we're doing this and you're doing that. And instead of being six or seven or eight hours away, we're minutes away. And when this is, o when this is over, I can go home, you can go home. And yet we've had a chance to visit with each other and kind of share some ideas. Um, seminars. We got seminars. We have, uh, you know, you can, some guys hire consultants, some guys, uh, you know, there's lots of different educational materials. Uh, travel expenses, you know, they'll spend some money there. Support staff, some people get, um, you know, if you know Su uh, Dan and Suzanne, they've got, they've got help. They've got help. They've hired help. And, and, and as long as I've known for 20 years, they've always had help. Okay. And so uh, this is a real business, you know, most, and, and um, 
and, and, and you know, the, the sky's the limit. Your vision is the limit, okay? So how do you make a decision? Gosh, how do you, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? You're, maybe you're a young guy and get young guy, young gal, or uh, maybe you're single. And who, who, who's going to help you with this? You know, pick somebody. I don't know. <laughs> you just pick somebody. Uh, pick somebody. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're married, maybe you might consider your spouse and, and talk about it. Um, things to consider about Amway. Um, can you achieve, here's some questions. Can you achieve with a reasonable amount of investment of time and money and effort what you're talking about? How would you know that? Who can you get, uh, you can go on the internet and ask, ask the guys who say, says, says we're great or says we're a scam. But what I would do in that particular case is I'd go to somebody that's in the business uh, that has accomplished something and, you know, and, and find out what it would take to actually achieve some, what you're looking at. Um, history. There's a book out by, by Rich DeVos, one of the founders, called Simply Rich. I don't think you have to finish the book to get started, but man, I don't think you can finish your dream in this business unless you if, if, if understand the background and the history of this business. Two guys get started, they're in high school, and um, they get to know each other. They're kind of different guys. One guy's kind of an introvert, the other guy's an extrovert, and, but they form a partnership it goes off into war. It gets come, comes back. World War II is over. They get into a bunch of businesses. Um, and none of the businesses, they got into the airplane business. None of them, they, they, they couldn't, neither one of them knew how to fly. Uh, they got into the restaurant business. Neither one of them ever, ever worked at a, at a restaurant. They got into, uh, they, bought a sh they bought a ship. And they, they this, re this uh, by the way, the, I'm talking about the airplane. They got into where the point where they owned, I think, 12 airplanes. Okay. These kids were in their 20s, and they owned 12 airplanes, and they were teaching people how to fly. They thought that, fly, uh, that, that uh, f uh, airplanes would be like automobiles someday, okay? Um, but then, and oh, I, I guess the last story that, that really kind of cemented is that they wanted to go around, uh, you know, uh, uh, South America in a ship. Well, it sunk on the way out to Cuba, but they kept going. And what I got from that is, you know what? They didn't have to know how to do everything before they went for it. They just went for it. And, and, and that, those ideas of that spirit, uh, you'll find in the Amway culture and the folks that, that maybe resonate with it, okay? I think it's so important to understand the history. It's, it's just like it is important for people who come to this country. Uh, so important that they understand the United States history. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, change the world. It's not just a place, a, a great place to, you know, it's not just because we have free enterprise. Lots of countries have free enterprise, but we have something about people and our, the value we put on people that sets us apart and has allowed us all kinds of uh, opportunities um, and has allowed this country to be a, a great one, okay? Uh, you might, uh, Amway has a magazine out there, Achieve Magazine. You might want to read the, read the magazine a little bit and find out a little bit more about the culture. Financial strength, 50 years I mean, is this thing, you know, I've been, in, I've been approached so many times by so many different companies in the last five or six years. Hey, in fact, they, they, some of them even, they, they, they said they'd pay me if, if, I, if, I, if I came in and, and, and built a business there. Um, but I have been around for a little while. Doesn't matter. I'm, I love Rich DeVos and Jay Van. I'm, I'm committed here, just like I'm committed to my, anyway, I, I love this thing, you know. 50 years, 110 countries, 12 billion sales, 40 billion and paid out commissions to folks like you and me. Uh, that's quite a track record. It's hard to compete with, with a re re record like that, okay? Um, so that's a little bit about when you're thinking about long, you know, getting involved with something. Once you weigh all those little things out, you go, looks like, looks like it's, it's a safe place to, to get going, okay? Think about that. Okay. Um, what's next is three simple things. I'm assuming you're moving forward, otherwise you've gone home, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, if, if you're gone home, you're not seeing this. But if you say, okay, now what? Well, what's net is, hey, three things. Decide what you want to do, okay? Decide what you want to do. Get some help. Design a plan. Somebody that's, uh, you know, that's, that's been in the business for some time and has achieved some, some success, say, this is what I want. I want to achieve $500 a month. That would be my first step, okay? How do I achieve that goal in three months or two months or whatever, whatever it is? And you devise a plan. So 
Get your vision, devise a plan, and then go track it and, and go do it. Get, get, your, get a new vision, create a new plan, go out and do it. That's, that's, that's all we're talking about, okay? Maybe, and maybe the last idea, a marketing plan, as you say, well, how do I get to talk to? How do I get to get this thing ex expanded? Do it like professionals do it, okay? They go after uh, people uh, that, that build businesses, oftentimes will establish people that they go to people that love you know like them know them and trust them and they, they may talk to them about their venture but by no means do they require that they join their venture okay and if you i would much rather get into somebody's rolodex or not rolodex but into their phone and find that they have 20 30 40 contacts than get a yes or a no on them okay if they want to come along i guarantee you they'll they'll, they'll come along but if they know me, like me, and trust me, and I tell them what I'm doing, and they, and they can resonate with it, and, and, I, and I explain to them what I'm what I'm looking for, um, you know, they they kind of that that's a good that's a good that's a good thing to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish up with this. Um, one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite experiences that I had in my life is um, when I was in college. I played for BYU and. We were playing SMU in a, in a bowl game, okay? And they had two of the best backs in, 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 in college history, but we, had a, we were no number one in passing in the nation at that time, and they were number one in running. They had called SMU the Pony Express, Eric Dickerson and Craig James. And um, they were killing us, <laughs> you know? The first quarter, they were up three touchdowns. The second quarter, they were up five touchdowns, you know? But, we, but they would score two, we would score one. They would score two more, we'd score one more. And it got down to the fourth quarter, right about the, you know, the, the four minute mark. And they were up 20 points. It was 45 to 25. And we were, it was, it was fourth down. And we had Jim McMahon on our team and our coach pulled him out, sent, sent the uh, plenting team in. And Jim came off the, the, uh, the field and, and whispered something into coach Edwards, ear that only him and anybody within a thousand miles could have heard quit, give up, you know? And, um, Coach just said, you're right, time out. Go back out there. Take your, who cares if we, miss by, if we lose by 20 points or 25 or 30? Give it your best shot, son. They went out there. We got a first down. Three plays later, we were in the end zone. Then we kicked an onside kick. And three or four plays later, we were in the end zone again. Now we're only down six points. Uh, but there's only 18 seconds left on the clock. Um, they get the ball. We kicked an onside kick, but they get the ball. But we blocked the punt with three seconds left on the clock. And we throw a 65-yard bomb into the end zone, and we got a touchdown. We ended up winning the game, okay? And I like to ask people, wow, when do you think, or what was it exactly that caused the turnaround? You know, what was it that caused the turnaround? Was it the players? Was it, was it the stand? What was it? I think it was a young man who said, hey, I'm not ready to go down yet. You know, I'm not ready to go down yet, coach. And I got enough guts to tell you about it. And I'm going to make, take some action. So he did. He took some action. And you know what? He changed with that. Just that one thing that he did, he changed the course of that game and the outcome. Changed the lives for a lot of people, you know. And uh, think about that. Maybe you can too. Thanks.